Another characteristic of the open and distance learning system is accessibility. Here we mean that we are removing the barriers that has made some people disadvantaged because of their location or gender or economic constraints. I, a good example here is, is the issue of the prisoners. National Open University of Nigeria has study centers in many prisons in Nigeria, and some of the prisoners have graduated from their chosen courses. So this means that unlike before, when a prisoner has no access to education in Nigeria today, prisoners can have good education. This also affects the physically challenged, the women in Puda, and a lot of people are now having access to education like before. Another characteristic kind of, of the open and distance learning is affordability. Now, in a research that was carried out in Zimbabwe, 90% of the students agree that the open and distance learning is affordable. Though there are some people who argue that because of the money the student will use to transport itself to the study center, at the end it is going to be more expensive. But in Nigeria, because we have so many study centers that are close to the students and the student can choose the center that is closest to him, it makes it more affordable for our students. Now, open and distance learning is technologically driven. By technologically driven, we mean that we make use of a lot of internet resources. And we can talk about electronic learning, mobile learning, ubiquitous learning. Now, unfortunately, many of this may not be in existence in Nigeria now, but I want you to note that the plan of the university, the act of the university recognizes that at some point in time, we are going to use all this technologically driven form of life. The use of mixed media courseware. In open and distance learning, a lot of media is used so that students can learn. We have print, we have radio, television broadcast, audio, video, computer-based instruction, as well as telecommunications. In order to, all these are mixed together so that students who are weak in one area will be strong in another area. The table before you shows you all kind of interactive and non-interactive as well as synchronous and asynchronous media of information. Another exercise we are going to look at is interactivity. One of the major criticisms against the ODS system is the lack of contact between students and lecturer on one hand and between learners on the other hand. And the only way this problem can be removed is by making their course interactive. There are two kinds of, uh, a, a kind of interaction that occurs between two or more objects is what we call in, an interactivity and it creates some kind of impact. Interactivity is silent, critical, creative conversation within a student's mind that is spurred on by the learning environment. There are four kinds of interactivity. We have the learner to content interactivity, learner to instructor interactivity, learner to learner interactivity, and learner to technology interactivity. We will take a look at this in the next few minutes. Now, learner to learn content. This is the interactivity that comes when learners study or examine the course content and other instructional activities. The content can take any form or a combination of the text, the audio, the videotape, the CD-ROM, the computer program, or online communication. Learner to instructor interactivity is the interaction that transpires between learners and lecturers that is intended to reinforce students' understanding of the course. As you are looking at me, facilitating you is a form of learner to instructor interactivity. Apart from this, by the time I begin to give you feedback on, uh, and give you assignment and tell you where you are weak and where you are strong, you will see learner to instructor interactivity in action. Learner to learner interactivity is the interaction that occurs among learners in a web 
this instruction. One of the things we are going to be doing in this course is to have discussion forums and chat forums as you participate, you interact with other learners. And you see, you have to participate by writing your opinion, by responding to other people's opinion, by criticizing. And so when you do this and you make your fellow learners to talk with you, to respond to you, you are created learner to learner interactivity. And the last one is learner to technology interactivity. Now, the truth is, if you want to excel in the open and distance learning, you have to be computer literate. You have to be computer savvy because you are going to relate a lot to technology. In fact, from the moment you start your admission process into a National Open University of Nigeria, you are already interacting with technology. And to the very end, you will be interacting with technology. Now, another characteristic of the open and distance learning is the fact that it is learner-centered. Learner-centered means we put learner, the learner at the center. Our focus has shifted from the teacher to the learner. So, look at this table. The, this diagram shows you the difference between a learner-directed teaching and a teacher-directed 